let's talk about a foundational concept in Swift, and that is types. Uh, what is a type? Uh, it, it's what type something is. Great explanation, I know. Let me show you and that'll make more sense. In this example, we're talking about the type int, which is short for integer, which is a, a whole number. Uh, now it can be negative, but an example of that is, let's say you have a high score in a video game. So we're gonna create a variable called high score. It is of type int and it equals zero, right? We're not, we're not very good at the game, uh, but the type is int. So what we're saying is this zero is an integer. Now in Swift, there's tons of different types. We're gonna talk about the foundational ones in this video, but the general idea is that our variable high score is of type int and it is equal to zero, which zero is an integer. Let's build upon that numerical example and talk about our next two types, and that is float and double. Whereas if integer was a whole number, float and doubles are decimals. Now the main difference you need to know between float and double is the amount of decimal places or the precision. A double has a precision of at least 15 decimal places, so pretty long, uh, whereas a float has a precision of at least six decimal places. So as you can tell, a double is more precise than a float. And now with these floats and doubles, you don't have to use all these decimal places. That's just their capabilities. As you'll see in this example of a percentage complete, like we want 76%. So we'll just do 0 0.76, right? You don't have to use all those decimals. 0 0.76 gets the message across. But to reiterate, here we have our variable called percentage complete, and that is of type double, and it equals 0 0.76. Moving away from our numerical examples, we have string. Now a string represents text, and in declaring a string, you put it in quotation marks like you see here. Let's look at an example. We'll create a variable called user's thoughts, and that is going to equal, I hope this course is good, right? So that is a string. Another example could be, you know, my name equals Sean, as you see here. So that is of type string. And finally, we have our bool type, which is short for Boolean, and that is just true or false. In the example here, you can see we have our variable is dark mode on, and that equals true. I know I ran through these quickly, but this is the foundational knowledge that we're going to use and explain throughout the entire course. So you're gonna have plenty of time to reinforce this knowledge. But I wanna leave you with two pieces of information before we leave the video on types. And that is that, like I said, there are tons of different types throughout Swift. And often we even create our own types when we create classes. So let's say we create a class that is a person, right? You can see Sean is of type person, and then you create that person object. More on that later in the course, but that's just an example of how it doesn't always have to be an int, a Boolean, right? You can create your own custom types. And then lastly, a big feature of Swift is type inference, right? So back to our high score example, if I do var high score equals zero, Swift is smart enough to know that because I put a zero there, not 0 0.76 or 1.89, it's a zero, Swift is smart enough to infer that, okay, this is an int or an integer, we don't need to declare the type. And I would say 95% of the time, type inference will work perfectly fine. There's a small subset of time where you will have to manually uh, declare your type. But uh, again, type inference works most of the time. So in future lessons or videos, if you don't see me like declare the type after my variable, like again, var my name is of type string equals Sean. If I just remove the is of type string, that's type inference at work. So hopefully that avoids confusion. But again, that's the basic knowledge of types. We're gonna use this all throughout the course. So you'll have plenty of practice with it.